So I was asking Selena, why am I here? I'm not a mapper. I know how to use maps. I put, you know, the, I, I put locations where they're supposed to be, but I have no idea what happens in the back end. Um, but we're here because of our involvement with the Open Government Partnership. Um, Selena made mention about the Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines. Um, I've been with ULAP for six years, but my love story with local governments is turning 10. Uh, so it's been a decade that I've been working with local governments. So let me share with you insights on the local government perspective um, so that you as crisis mappers coming from different sectors, or at least those who are interested in it, can have a glimpse of what we are concerned about and what we want you to prioritize, perhaps as you develop the apps, as you develop the tech, and as you engage with the government sector. So what's the Open Government Partnership? Um, it's a multi multilateral initiative uh, to secure concrete commitments from government from all over the world. So the Philippines is one of the eight founding uh, countries. And um, it's not just you know, a symbolic commitment. Every country would have to have um, action plans that run for two years. And if you don't get to do your action plan, they actually publicly shame you, <laughs> the OGP uh, network. But here's what we are. And the OGP stands for Transparency, Accountability, uh, Citizen Action, and Government Response. So that is the characteristic of the international consortium of the OGP. That's their website. Please take time to visit. For the Philippines, we are on our third action plan. It's about to end uh, this year and will enter into a different action plan for next year. Um, it's, a, it's a noisy slide, but just to give you what kinds of commitments the Philippines has put forward on the current commitment. Um, legislation, the, ac the access to information, transparency in local government plans and budgets. We call it the full disclosure policy. So local governments upload all their budgets and expenditure reports on a quarterly basis on the full disclosure portal. You can actually search that, Google it, and you will see all the reports down to the municipality level. Um, three, the open data initiative. I think we're uh, close to or, or more than 800 data sets that have been published on the national level. Four is the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. We are, in the Philippines, we are collecting uh, reports of the business sector, the government, the indigenous peoples groups as to their earnings and shares received on the revenues from extractive industries uh, in the Philippines. Number five, partic participatory audits uh, by citizen volunteers. Six, um, local planning and budgeting participation of communities. It's a wide range, right? Seven, um, feedback mechanism on public service delivery. We have our hotlines for government agencies. Eight, performance benchmarks for local governance, particularly if they pass audit requirements or not. So that gives you an idea if your local government doesn't pass audit requirements, it's a red flag. Um, where are we? Nine, ease of doing business, make it faster, um, take down red tape as much as possible. Local government competitiveness, again, process, business, uh, markets. Eleven, public-private partnerships, and twelve, corporate accountability. That's the range of what is being done in the Philippines. It's a lot. It's a lot, and, and we're very proud of that. Um, given the long history of civil society involvement in governance and uh, Policy making that is at least a testament to where the Philippines is. It's at least in terms of open government. Local government highlights. I'm just going to put it out there that you know 1,200 LGUs are complying, fully complying with the full disclosure policy. Next, we are doing with the support of the Making All Voices Count (MAVC). We are doing a pilot on disaggregating the extractive industries data so that the local actors can understand them better and make decisions, do participatory budget planning on the local level. Um, we have 1, 000, we have 254 LGUs, local government units, that have been awarded by the local government seal, the audit uh, with the basic audit requirement. And um, the last one, 
We have 38 cities and 88 municipalities with improved overall competitiveness index score. Now, this competitiveness index is a voluntary, uh, it's something voluntary, meaning the LGUs are not required to subject themselves into this grading system, but more and more local governments uh, do, and more and more local governments pass. So that's the good news, right? So what I am trying to tell you is that we have learned a lot, we have done a lot, we have learned a lot, and we've made a lot of mistakes. So that's where the insights are. Now, the guide question that the panel gave me is that, you know, does government become more accountable and responsive through more open practices, just as what you guys do with your tech and your apps? Um, in the Philippine context, especially with regard to the local government work, I would say we have a long way to go to cross the bridge of transparency to accountability. Those are two different monsters. What we have achieved over the past years is to make data and information available. And in discussing how we go for accountability, let me borrow this framework from uh, an IDS researcher, Anu Joshi. She says that, you know, accountability is a result of the movement among three things government response, information, and citizen action. So let's situate these three elements based on, crisis, uh, con based on the crisis context and what we know and what we've learned based on the open government experience in the Philippines. First, let's talk about government response. What we observe is that more and more open governance initiatives are actually government initiated. You get that? The spaces that are provided to people like you. I mean, you are able to map all these things because government gave you the data. Because government says, you know, we'll be willing to look at it later on. You know, we have OGP in the first place. Because without these policy, or other than the, the new executive order on the freedom of information. I mean, without all of these things, what is the space? So the challenge for people like you on your end is that if you know strategies and you have ways to make information available, to access it and make it available, what are new spaces for government engagement that you create, that you create on the civil society side, that is not allowed and given to you by government? Because worst comes to worst, if government shifts its priorities and says, we're not going to do that anymore, what are you going to do? We're not going to give it to you anymore. What are you going to do? That's one. Number two, information. That's where you guys are, right? The information side. Um, I would say, please, be more purposive in the way you manage the information that you collect and you have. Because we have been bombarded by so many websites and so many apps, but not all of them, a very few of them, are actually useful to people and governments on the subnational levels. On various, on various aspects, number one, who is it for? We have reviewed under a different project with MAVC, we have reviewed a government website that is supposed to be run on a national level, and it says the website has the capacity to get feedback from citizens. So we tested it. We got the website, went to the communities up there near the coast, so on and so forth. The website doesn't even load because of internet connection or because the website in itself, the way it was designed, was too heavy. So many moving things, so many things that load up, doesn't work. So we go back to the government agency and tell them, this is useless. How much did you spend for this? It doesn't work in the communities. That's one. Another aspect would be how is the data presented? The way that visualizations were given earlier are awesome. Those things can be understood. But take your talent and think about the fisher folk, people who might not have had the same educational levels as you do, 
people who do not know how to read Excel sheets? And ask yourself, how, do how, do import how does important information get to them in a way that they can absorb and, and, and consume and, and translate it into agenda that will help alleviate their lives? And next one, how is it accessed? Um, here in the Philippines, when it rains, signal goes down. Mobile connection goes down. So it's a constant challenge on our end. How do we create emergency centers, you know, the, the command centers that will stand if we had the types of Typhoon Haiyan again, if we have the types of earthquakes? I mean, the, the analysis is that you give Metro Manila a seven-magnitude uh, seven earthquake, this entire area will fall. So what do we do? Uh, here in the Philippines, we have a unique uh, but, but threatening uh, existence that we have so many vulnerabilities. So when you think about the information, how does it stand? How does it get accessed by people when emergency strikes? So we hope you become more creative and more flexible in accommodating different capacities of people's, people and communities. And um, last one, citizen action. Um, and this is where the critical turn from transparency to accountability comes in. I hope that as you design your, your apps and your websites, you think local. It's a very good example, the one that was presented earlier about land rights. They were very specific. We want this community to understand it. And I hope that is the same perspective you take with every experiment and the and, uh, innovation that you have. I hope you get to partner with people's organizations, non-government organizations, mobilized citizen groups, so that it becomes clear to you what the information you're visualizing for can be used for. Because we live in an age wherein citizen action and governance are both challenged by the demand for speed and the demand for so much information that, that at the end, as we're experiencing now in the Philippines, there's so much noise, but there's no agenda. There's, everything is so fast, but there's no response. Are very limited thereof. So these are thoughts coming from the government side. I look forward to your questions and maybe Later on, as we interact, we can also give you suggestions based on your interests on where in the Philippines you can work with better. Thank you and good morning.